Welcome into this week's edition of the Climate Friday newsletter. Meteorologist John Birchfield here. Good to have you with us, whether this finds you online on WTOL.com, on WTOL 11 Plus, or on our YouTube channel. We got new Climate Fridays each and every Friday. Hard to believe we're already in the middle of August, and as we round the corner from summer into autumn, we are really heating things up in the tropics. So in this week's edition, we are going to talk about the tropics, including Hurricane Hillary that is poised to make landfall as we head towards the week weekend and talk about some of the climate impacts that may be intensifying hurricanes and also what you can expect as far as Hillary is concerned, the track, the trajectory and the impacts. So let's break down the data and the latest information on Hillary. We're recording this Thursday evening and if you're watching this on Friday, it is likely that Hillary has intensified even more with that hurricane encountering the warm open waters of the Pacific. You can really see that counterclockwise swirl of the hurricane. This is what we call an infrared satellite image. In other words, it takes a picture of the cloud tops and measures their temperatures and you get a good feel for whether the storm is strengthening and due to the warm waters, Hillary has intensified as of this recording a category two storm. But by the time you're watching this on Friday, likely to be a major hurricane wind speeds of 110 miles an hour and overall the movement is west northwest with a central pressure of 960 millibars and the lower that pressure goes, the stronger and more potent the hurricane is. Now we've been keeping a close eye on the hurricane's eye and what you'll see here is actually a bit of an eye wall replacement. In other words, the main eye of the storm gets replaced with a new one. You'll notice two centers there, each of which is over top of very warm water and that eye wall replacement sometimes results in a brief downtick in the intensity. But after that downtick, once it gets back to one hurricane eye, the storm likely intensifies and ramps back up. So keeping a close eye on the eye of the storm and also the trajectory. The overall motion of Hillary is going to the north there along that storm cone that you can see from the National Hurricane Center. Still a bit of uncertainty regarding the exact track, but it is likely this will reach major hurricane status likely exceeding cat four. The wind speeds could possibly get up to 140 miles per hour, if not a bit stronger. And hurricane experts are expecting this intensity to occur by Friday afternoon and continue through Friday night into Saturday when it'll really maintain those peak wind speeds. As it continues its northern trajectory, there is a chance that landfall is made on the Baja Peninsula, which is where most of these Pacific hurricanes make landfall. But again, there is still a bit of spring spread on an east west level and it could be a little bit further this way or a little bit further that way, depending on the exact trajectory of this hurricane. There is still the chance that it goes around the Baja Peninsula and goes up and makes landfall in Southern California, which would be an exceeding rarity as far as the tropics are concerned. Timing wise, this is Sunday morning. At this point, it would be down to cat two status. And again, there's still a little bit of wiggle room where the hurricane could make landfall on the Baja Peninsula or continue trajectory into Southern California. One thing's for sure, it is still going to be a very potent low pressure system in the southern part of California, and it'll bring heavy inundating rainfalls. So how is climate change impacting the tropics? Well, one thing we are seeing is an overall warming trend of the ocean waters. We talk about global warming not only in terms of the air temperatures, but also the water temperatures. This map shows sea surface temperatures, and that pink and orange color shows you temperatures that are warmer than average. Now, you'll notice, yeah, there's a little bit of blue out to the north and west, but the vast majority of our ocean waters are far warmer than normal. That can also be said for the Gulf of Mexico, which is exceedingly warm and is likely to see more tropical activity as the season unfolds. As Hurricane Hillary makes its way over those warm open waters, it's no surprise that this rapid intensification has occurred. So one of the biggest impacts of Hillary, other than the winds, is going to be the soaking rains. Parts of Southern California could see up to six inches of rainfall, including Metro LA that may see three to five inches. Even portions of Arizona and Nevada could see several inches of rainfall. And many of these spots don't ordinarily see that amount of rain during the entire course of a year, let alone during one go around with a tropical system. Here's some of the impacts Hillary is going to have significant flooding as possible in Southern California. Of course, when you're not used to getting that much rain, flooding
flash flooding is a concern. One spot in particular, Death Valley, where if you get two to three inches of rain in a short period of time there, it can mean trouble as far as rising water levels. The Baja Peninsula is likely to see three to six inches of rainfall. And of course, that is partially dependent on the exact track, whether it makes landfall in the Baja or continues to Southern California. Years worth of rainfall possible in a single day. Believe it or not, there are portions of Southern California that ordinarily see rainfall in the magnitude of two inches over the entire calendar year. So imagine getting your entire year's worth of rainfall in one day. That is why flash flooding is such a concern. Last but not least, the southwest, including the desert southwest, is going to see a big cool down, and part of that has to do with Hillary's cloud cover and rainfall. Oftentimes, these tropical systems bring unseasonably cool conditions. Now, to get a landfall in California would be exceptionally rare. It has been 84 years since a tropical storm made landfall in California. California. And I want to emphasize landfall because there are plenty of tropical storms that landfall in the Baja Peninsula and proceed to Southern California. But if it actually makes landfall in the United States in the contiguous state of California, it has been since 1934 since that occurred. Now, way back in the day, our weather records do go back to the 1800s. There was actually a hurricane landfall that occurred near San Diego. That was in 1858. This is not expected. If that landfall did occur in California, it would likely just be a tropical storm by that point. Now, parts of Southern California are under moderate drought conditions still shown by that brown color. But as I mentioned, a little rain, certainly a good thing, but too much rain, a year's worth of rainfall, far too much. Looking out towards coastal California, including LA up towards Bakersfield, no drought conditions have been observed. What about here at home? Well, we are down to just abnormally dry. We were under moderate drought conditions, but thankfully that has eased up a little bit due to recent rainfall and southwest of Toledo still in need of rainfall in Seneca, Wyandotte County over towards the Indiana, Ohio state line. But overall, our rainfall needs have eased on up. We'll continue to keep you updated on the tropics as oftentimes hurricane and tropical storm season really starts to ramp up during this late summer and early autumn time frame. So we'll keep you posted on Hillary and whatever the tropics may bring subscribe to the climate Friday newsletter for the latest.